Hello everyone. Today we're going to be learning about how to actually construct I stable in order for us to actually calculate the equilibrium constant of either KC or KP. Now, of course, calculation of KC and KP will not be shown on this particular video, right? If you were looking for calculation of KC and KP, please look ahead in the link that is actually posted right above. All right. So uh, this particular video, it's actually for us to prepare the I stable. I stable stands for the uh, initial change and the equilibrium number of moles of the reactants and product. Uh, this is actually going to be very important before calculating KC and KP because as a student, right, when you're calculating the uh, uh, equilibrium constant of either KC or KP, you need to actually work out the equilibrium number of moles of both the reactants and also the product. So it's very important for you to actually uh, get this right first before you move on to calculating KC or KP, right? So right now, what happened is that the equation is normally given to you, right? So in this case, you're going to have your, uh, I'm going to put it as just an alphabet over here, A reacting with uh, 2B, you're going to get C uh, plus 3D. So the question reads like this, you're going to be given 0.1 mole of A, which will react with 0.5 moles of B based on the equation above. And what is important is that at equilibrium 0.05 moles of C are actually obtained. You are required to calculate number of moles of the A, B, and D at equilibrium. So uh, what you need to do is just put in all the information that is given on the uh, question into your ice table. Like for example, what I had over here, uh, 0.1 mole of A, I actually put it uh, under the initial number of moles of A, right? A number of moles, initial number of moles of B, I uh, given is 0.5 moles, so I put it right here as well. The uh, initial number of moles of C and D will be zero because uh, there's nothing mentioned in the question over here. So they mentioned at equilibrium, 0.05 moles of C are actually obtained. So uh, C number of moles at equilibrium was given 0.05. And that's exactly what I have actually written over here in my uh, equilibrium number of moles for C as well. Now, uh, when 0.05 moles of C is actually obtained at equilibrium, it actually means that the number of moles of C has actually seen an increase in the number of moles by 0.05. So therefore, uh, on uh, this, this particular uh, change column over here, I will actually put up the number of moles of C to be plus 0.05, which is clearly means that the uh, reaction is actually going right hand side. That means the reaction is actually progressing right uh, from left to right over here. So there's an increase in the number of moles of the C. C will be regarded as a product in this reaction because it increased in its amount of moles by 0.05 moles. Uh, for D over here, now you notice over here that, that I put up three times 0.05. Why three times 0.05? Now change for one mole, it's plus 0.05 for the product side. However, for the uh, D over here, there are three moles of D that is actually produced okay, on the product side. So therefore, the uh, change, which is 0.05, you need to make sure you multiply it with the number moles given on the equation. So always remember, yeah, the, the changes identified for one mole is plus 0.05. Of course, this is for the product side, right? So it's plus 0.05 multiplied by three because the number moles of the product on this particular side is actually three moles. So three times positive 0.05 will actually give you the equilibrium number of moles required, which I'm going to show you right at the bottom in a short while. Uh, on the other side for A and B, which acts as a reactant, uh, you need to remember that you need to actually minus off the uh, change for one particular mole is going to be minus 0.05. Okay, it actually work by ratio, as you can see over here, if the change for one mole of product is plus 0.05, you are actually going to need to actually put up the change for reactant to be minus 0.05. You don't expect to be uh, balance out the ratio because uh, the reactant is going to be used up to form the product, right? Which is actually on the, this particular side. So reactant is supposed to reduce in its amount, right? And the product is supposed to increase by, uh, yeah. By, 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 by the amount that is actually written right over here. So uh, if one changes for one mole on the product size plus 0 
on the reactant side, it should be minus 0 0.05. So uh, for B over here, you have to be careful. There is a need for us to actually make changes for two moles. So therefore, you can see over here, two times zero, two, two times minus 0 0.05. Sorry for that. Two times minus 0 0.05. Okay. Uh, because why two times minus 0 0.05? Because the change now is actually for two moles. That's why there's a need for you to actually put two uh, times a change for one mole, which is actually minus 0 0.05. Just do your maths over here. Take the initial, okay, uh, plus that of the changes. You're going to actually get the equilibrium number of moles as stated at the bottom, okay? So remember uh, your uh, yeah, equilibrium number of moles of A is going to be that of 0 0.10 minus 0 0.05, whereas the number of moles at equilibrium for B is going to be 0 0.5, uh, minus that of uh, 0 0.1. So that's why I get 0 0.4. And of course, on the product side, it's basically just three times uh, positive 0 0.05. Therefore, you get the equilibrium number of moles to be 0 0.15. So yes, this is basically the equilibrium number of moles that's going to be required for you to move on to calculate Kc. So again, I'm not discussing Kc calculation on this particular video. We'll actually discuss it in the next video, yeah? All right. So. This is just one sample calculation over here. Uh, this particular reaction, we actually have the uh, reaction to progress from left to right. So uh, as what we are seeing over here, C and D are the product. So therefore, you are going to get uh, the uh, number of moles to increase. On the uh, left-hand side, you've got your reactants. The number of moles will actually reduce. So this is one example. Let's move on to the next example and see what we have. Okay, so now we have M, N, P and Q to be in equilibrium with one another. So uh, it's mentioned that a mixture of one mole of M, two moles of N, 0 0.5 moles of P and one mole of Q are all allowed to reach equilibrium in a silt vessel under a constant temperature. It was found that 0 0.3 moles of P were present at equilibrium. So just like just now, we place all the um, uh, initial number of moles, right, right below over here. I have one more of M, two moles of N, 0 0.5 moles of P, and also one more of Q written at the initial number of moles, okay? Um, so next, what is important is this information here. We got 0 0.3 moles of P were present at equilibrium. That I will put it right over here at the equilibrium number of moles, right? We're required now to calculate number of moles of M, N, and Q. And you notice something here already, isn't it? Yeah, I have an initial number of moles uh, to be larger compared to the equilibrium number of moles. Uh, it seems that my, 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 my P has actually reduced in its amount. And you are correct that, yeah, you actually see that there's a, there is a reduction in the amount of a P over here. So what we're seeing here is that, yes, this is basically the change that happens to P. Right, I put up over here, the changes is obviously uh, 0 0.2. You're going to see a reduction of 0 0.2 moles of P, that is. But uh, remember, you need to actually make sure you calculate change for one mole. And uh, since that the change is 0 0.2 and we have two moles of P that is present over here, that means literally we are actually seeing a change for one mole is minus 0 0.1 times 2. Then uh, you just sum this up, 0 0.5 plus 2 times minus 0 0.10, you are literally getting 0 0.30. So very important in exam, make sure you find out the change for one more. And yes, this is a, a little bit special here because we're seeing that uh, the P and Q on the right-hand side getting a reduction in amount of moles once the equilibrium has been established. What does this mean? This actually means that our equilibrium, it's actually shifting from right to left. So there's something um, yeah, special about this particular reaction. Now, bear in mind, they can give you this particular scenario in exam. So uh, let's move on and talk about Q, right? So for Q over here, we started from uh, one mole, and there's actually four moles of Q uh, in this particular uh, equilibrium over here. So what's going to be the change over here? You need to actually take, remember, change for one mole, which is minus 0 0.1, okay? Multiply by four. That's going to be the change for the Q. And on the other side, which is uh, on the left-hand side, the M and the N, remember the equation is going to be shifting from right to left. Yeah? So you're going to see the amount of uh, N over here to increase, 
right? Plus 0 0.10. And for M, you're going to see the amount to also increase, but this time uh, you have to actually multiply by 2, 2 plus 0 0.10. To sum up the uh, initial and uh, change number of moles, you're going to be able to get the equilibrium number of moles as stated right here, right? So, of course, remember the Q, okay, you have to actually minus off, yeah, 1 uh, minus 0 0.40, you get 0 0.60, right? Uh, on this particular right-hand side, your N, you have to actually add up, so therefore you're getting 2.1 moles at equilibrium for N. For M, you actually get uh, 1.2 moles that is actually uh, produced here. Now, remember, this is uh, showing us that equilibrium is shifting towards the left hand side. Okay, so the equilibrium is actually moving in this particular direction, shifting from right to left. That's why you are actually seeing the changes of moles to be different compared to the earlier question. So again, uh, we are not calculating KC or KP in this video. We'll do it in the next video, yeah? So we're going to move on to see another example right now. So the other example will require you to look at the, the changes in terms of uh, the percentages that's actually given to us, such as this particular question here. I'm just going to put as alphabet over here, X, all right, uh, converts to Y, okay, X, uh, one mole over here, of course, uh, Y is actually given in two moles in the equation. So it's mentioned that X is 50% dissociated at 60 degrees Celsius. Calculate number of moles of both X and Y at equilibrium. That's what you are required to do. So notice that there's no initial number of moles given for us for X, right? Uh, no initial number of moles given for Y as well. So what we'll do is that uh, if percentages is given to us, uh, all you have to do is just select your initial number of moles. I, I selected, as you can see here, my initial number of moles of X is one mole, okay? And why they didn't mention anything, so we put it as zero. So uh, that's, that's just me. Uh, if you wish to start from a different number of moles, you can. If you wish you want to start from 10 moles, you can. You start from 100 moles, you can also do that. But I normally put it as one mole as the initial number of moles whenever percentage is given to us for simplicity so that the calculation becomes easier. Yeah, you will know what I mean when I do the calculation now. So say 50% of X dissociated. Uh, you need to ask yourself, how much is 50% uh, of one mole? All of you are great in maths, right? I'm sure you can actually find out that the change for X is going to be minus 0 0.5. So if the change for one mole on this particular uh, X is actually minus 0 0.5, and the change here is for one mole. On the other side, that which is on the product side, you are actually going to see an increase in the amount. But be careful, there are two Ys over here. So that what is going to be the change here? You actually need to have the 0 0.50 multiplied by 2. Why? Because the change here is for two moles, right? So yeah, so just do the simple calculation. Just add up the initial, the sum up the initial and the change number of moles. You're going to be able to find out the equilibrium number of moles of X to be 0 0.5. The equilibrium number of moles of y to be one mole as stated right over here so that's what we have over here again this is a uh, calculation of number of moles of the reactants and the product whenever a percentage is given so yeah just select one mole okay as the initial number of moles because it's easier so you can actually just take uh, yeah the change as uh, the um, yeah uh, fifty percent of one is basically just minus zero point five, right? And then you can just make sure that you do the uh, change on the right hand side. And just find the equilibrium number of moles, right? So this kind of question is very common when you're actually doing the uh, KP uh, calculation. Very common for KP calculation. So again, uh, KP calculation it's actually going to be uh, discussed later in the next video. So if you are if you are needing to actually see calculation of KC and KP, just make sure you follow the links right above. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, if you like videos like this, please subscribe to the channel. Right. Give a like, comment. Right, and share this video to all your friends. Okay. I'll see you in the next one. My name is Lucas Chan. Thank you. Bye bye.